In today's video, we're going to dive into the world of laser engraving. No, 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 no. This right here is the Acer L2. Um, it's a 24 watt laser engraver with air assist. It has a couple of, of cool features. Let's go over this machine. Um, what do you need to know about laser engravers? I am new to this area. I'm still kind of figuring it out. Can you figure this out rather quickly? Does it take a long time? Let's see. Um, let's dive into the video, shall we? So here we have all the pieces laid out right from the box and all the bags are labeled quite nicely and actually labeled by the step. So it, it shows what screws are inside each bag, but also like what step you're using them to assemble them. So we have the frame, glasses. This right here is the laser. And then we have the pump and we have we have a little screen here. Oops. So one thing here is that a lot of this is already assembled right out of the box. The uh, harnesses. So this is really kind of like a plug and play system. All ready to just click together. So machine is all set up and I'm at the stage right now where I want to start playing with this machine. So I'm going to uh, download software. They are suggesting two software options here, Lightburn and Laser Gerbil, GRBL. Okay, so here we have a lock. You can turn it on, make sure nobody can turn it on. So we have on off and we have a USB stick here that had software update. We have HDMI cable here going to the screen. This is the power. Now let's connect my laptop. Turn it like that. Okay, there we go. Here, setting. Okay, we have a touch screen, autofocus. This uh, light burn seems like a pretty nice software. I also downloaded this other one, the Laser Gerbil, which is not nearly as sophisticated, but it is free and it's starting up. <laughs> Until I get a sense for when you need to wear the glasses and when you don't, I should probably like keep them on, although everything's very green. When you think about, you know, getting a laser engraver compared to a CNC machine, there are some overlap there, right? Like if you're interested in making signs, for example, you can use a, you know, a CNC machine to make signs and a laser engraver, but the look is different, right? Here, uh, we're now working with a bit that we have to, you know, switch depending on the material. Um, we don't have to go down. We only have the laser itself. So we're really working with fire. We're burning here, right? Uh, and so it's all about controlling that laser. So right here under here now, I have a thin piece of plywood. Let's hit start. Oh wow, okay. Okay, that didn't actually do anything. Still nothing. So yesterday when I was playing around with this, I wasn't able to get it to work. And I think my main issue was that I just had my speed set too quickly. I was testing between like 300 to 3000 speeds. I did a test where I did like 30 and that seems to be working better. Let's do this little square here. 40 millimeters per second in terms of speed at 100% power. My issue all along was just that I had things way too high by a magnitude of 10 or 100. <laughs> now, the thing that I think is pretty appealing about a laser engraver um, is that it's, there's not much to it, right? Um, I mean, it's about finding the right setting, but you don't have to think about securing your material in any particular way, not like the CNC where there's such forces involved. Uh, so basically, I'm just kind of trying to now do some tests. So I've written hello, and I have changed the speed for each hello, and the speed is all at 100%. The percentage refers to how much power you're getting from the laser itself. Is it at 100%? or is it weaker? And the speed obviously is how fast the laser moves. If it moves very fast, you'll get a shallow cut. It's not gonna go very fast. Um, if it moves very slowly, you'll get a deeper cut. I just turned some fans on high because it got a little smoky in here. That's one thing about burning stuff on wood. But this was kind of an interesting experiment because you could definitely tell that 10 millimeters per second, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. This is probably the best one. 
gonna do the same thing again. This time, let's put all of the uh, things on 30 millimeters per second, and then let's mess around with it with the power here. Smokiness, certainly something to consider if you wanna get something like this. It's nice to have a workspace because this is quite smoky and I've got fans going. I guess you could build some sort of system to capture the smoke. So I would say from these tests right here, <laughs> this still probably the best one. This is 30 millimeters per second at 100%. None of these at a lower percentage really worked, but when we bring it down to 20 millimeters per second and we lower the percentage, that actually kind of works here. So maybe like this one. When you're testing something like this, there is a question of the machine, and there's a question of the program you use, and then of course your ability to, you know, how, how well you know it. So I'm using this light burn now, which seems to be a, a rather common program within the laser engraving uh, community. Um, you can design stuff in there, you can import stuff. Sorry about the noise, I want to keep the fans on because it is kind of smoky in here. Um, so one thing, another thing I want to test out now is um, how well does this autofocus work? Like this has an autofocus feature. Um, and you set it here to be like on or off. And I initially thought that you have it on, the autofocus automatically is on. Turns out it doesn't. You have to actually set it in the software, the Lightburn software. You want to activate that feature. Otherwise, you can actually just manually focus it. Let's bring this down. You do have to do that though, because if you don't do it, you don't get very crisp results. Now, the thing about, um, you know, Figuring out something like this or any any machine, right, when it comes to, to creating stuff, is about playing with it and, and, and just kind of learning what settings work and what doesn't work. And that also depends on what material you are using, right? One thing I want to check is engraving on leather. Because that'd be kind of cool. Piece of leather. It is kind of nice when you just put the leather there. <laughs> I don't have to, um, you know, glue it down. is pretty good. That might be my favorite yet. You know, leather obviously is gonna react differently than wood. It also smells like burning leather, which is not the most appealing smell, but you know, I like that one a lot. So here are some of the tests more recently, which I think turned out pretty good. Very crisp lines. I've actually engraved this on a box. So this turned out really good. I was playing a little bit with kind of um, designs here too, like a, an eagle here. We have our Superman logo. But one of the things that I'm finding kind of just like fun about this is that the learning curve or the point to where you can get started in terms of actually using the machine and printing stuff, it's not that far off from when you first get it. Um, like when I think about CNC stuff, there's a lot of stuff involved in, in kind of setting things up and and feed speeds and, and all of that. This is really not that, that much. You can kind of start playing with it right away and testing things out. Now, this machine has a couple of different features and some of that stuff is done through software as well. One of those things is syncing cutting capability, an automatic Z-axis syncing function, so that it, this can adjust its focus to suit different thicknesses. That's something that I kind of still want to play with and explore a little bit. I haven't gotten to that yet. Um, the air assist here apparently is like adjustable. This is another feature that you will set through light burn. Um, so it's kind of about smarter heat dissipation to ensure that your materials stay cool throughout the engraving process. Then we have of course the autofocus feature also set through the software. This autofocus feature ensures precise and accurate engraving results even for intricate designs. Then we also have the resume engraving feature which means in in the case of a power outage, you don't have to worry. The machine will detect power loss automatically and then resume exactly where it left off. Now this is not the first model of the Laser laser engravers. They have had a couple of models previously and this is like a big step up apparently in terms of the speed. This will engrave three to four times faster than uh, their, their first generation counterpart. So it's you know, quite a lot of improvements in this machine. Now there are a couple of different ways that you can import a design into 
this here now. You can either connect it to a computer and then operate it through a software, or you can copy that file and put it directly on a USB stick. Um, like if you didn't want to have, you didn't have access to your laptop or something right there. Um, I, I have to say in terms of the design and everything, I look, think it looks really good. It's very sleek, um, like not too complicated in terms of <laughs> the parts to it. So I feel, I feel really good about my last results here. After I got the focus right, everything improved dramatically. So that was kind of a big one. Um, and of course, you know, getting that speed right, the percentage right. And then when you change material, you have to kind of change those settings again do some new tests um, but once you have your settings right it is so quick and fun and fast to do laser engraving it's really kind of cool and now when I go through my house I come across things and I think about like oh that would be cool to to to, to like engrave or that would be interesting to see if you could do this material or test it out it's kind of cool that you can engrave on leather I think and that's like I'm, I'm kind of thinking about book binding and if you want to make like a book cover and you want to have it like a design and write the title and the author and and, and something like that that would be a really cool use of the laser engraver um, or kind of create journals notebooks that kind of thing and utilize it for that or like tags I'm also thinking like for if you're sewing things they have like leather tags that are engraved like one thing that I think would be kind of cool to get into um, eventually you know those kind of 3d puzzles um, that you can buy that that uh, are cut it out and you kind of put them together that would be kind of fun to uh, to design and then to try to uh, to cut out um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Um, I'll put a link to this unit in the description. Um, you can go check it out if you're interested. I think that's about it. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you soon. Oh, let me know in the comments below if you have a laser engraver, what your favorite thing to do with it is. Do you make signs with it or do you engrave um, other things? Do you use other materials? Um, I would love to hear about it in, yeah, in the comments below. Let me know.